So again, the major, psycho the major psychoactive component is THC. Uh, when people have, let's just say you're taking marijuana, for example, um, and patients or, or people have smoked marijuana or have ingested THC, we're finding that it usually starts um, magnifying their existing personality. Um, so if, um, if people are maybe not in the best of moods and um, have some thoughts that are maybe not so positive, it may magnify that. Not to the same extent as alcohol, but it may magnify that. On the flip side, this is where some of the CBD comes in. Um, where it can actually start, you know, calming the patient. So, so which one wins? That can be variable, and and sometimes it's it's so variable that you don't you don't even know what strain they're getting, what product they're getting, and that's where the variability comes in. And so, again, from a healthcare provider standpoint, um, when we're looking at not regulated products, so non-medical cannabis products, this is where we get concerned because we don't know exactly what the patient's getting and what's going to happen. Whereas with CBD, with medical uh, cannabis products. Um, we at least have a breakdown and we know what product they're getting and we know how it was manufactured and we know that there's no illicits or counterfeits that are mixed into that. Uh, just, um, just in the last month, you guys have probably heard about uh, the, the over-the-counter CBD, synthetic CBD that killed a bunch of people, right? You heard about that? They bled to death, literally bled to death, uh, because it had a, a blood thinner in there. Um, you had over 100 people that were rushed to the hospital. You had at least three people who have died. Um, and, and this happens. This is where we get really concerned about some of these over-the-counter products uh, and stuff that's on the street. So the effects of the mindset of the user in the setting, you know, some of the psychological effects may include um, disruption in attention or disruption in memory, and like short-term memory, for example. Um, sometimes it may alter the sensory information, which we all know, which could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what that information is that they're trying to interrupt. It can act as an analgesic. It can help with pain. It can decrease motor movement and, and, and immunosuppression. That can be advantageous in certain situations, especially in things like seizures, tremors, um, again, like, like uh, for diseases such as Parkinson's. You may want to actually decrease the motor uh, function, the motor input, because you have an excessive motor function. Uh, can call ptosis, so this is a little drooping of the eye. Increased heart rate, sleepiness, uh, temperature may change, relaxation, obviously. Uh, increased appetite, and then finally paranoia. I'm sure you've, you've uh, heard of that or seen that in certain uh, people who have, say, smoked uh, marijuana and who have that TH, uh, high level of THC. Uh, what can it do from a medical standpoint? Obviously, again, pain relief, reduction of nausea and vomiting, that's been really huge, as especially from a, a medical CBD standpoint. A lot of patients who, um, for whatever reason with their disease, they have a lot of nausea, a lot of vomiting, and this has helped reduce that. Um, helped in chemotherapy tremendously, as well as aged patients. Uh, lowering of intraocular pressure, um, one, of, one a great option for patients who have uh, in, high intraocular pressure and glaucoma. Uh, analgesia, promotion of weight gain, obviously with the increased appetite. Uh, we talked about the sleep and we talked about, obviously from a pain relieving standpoint and muscle relaxation standpoint. Uh, it, there, you know, we've, we've heard uh, the argument, right, against medical cannabis is, oh, there's no science, there's no research out there. And the reality is, is there's a tremendous amount of science and a tremendous amount of research out there. A lot of it did not come from America, and the reason it didn't come from America, because it is a Schedule One controlled substance, which means it's recognized as something that has absolutely no benefit to mankind as a Schedule One substance. Uh, that also prevents research. So a lot of the research that has been done has been done overseas, and there's a tremendous amount of research looking at medical cannabis as well as medical cannabis in chronic pain. Um, Webb noted in 2014 that a 64% average decrease in chronic pain after one year of medical cannabis, that was a survey of 100 patients. Um, we've, we have seen probably the best safety record, at least from a fatality standpoint, um, relative to other products that we have on the market. Uh, no deaths directly from, you know, legitimate usage of a legitimate product, you know, in a legitimate way. And, um, and really, uh, again, with that same legitimacy, mild adverse reactions. Uh, cannabis and neuropathic pain, so nerve pain, so this goes back to this whole endocannabinoid system, as well as the central nervous system. Neuropath there's four types of pain that are out there. There's neuropathic pain, nociceptive pain. Uh, inflammatory pain and central pain. Okay, those are the four types of uh, topic uh, categorizations we have. Neuropathic pain refers to nerve pain. So like diabetic peripheral neuropathy or shingles pain, uh, those are all nerve pain. But a lot of other diseases have nerve pain as well. And we have seen that cannabis has been helpful in reducing nerve pain. Actually a very effective option in reducing nerve pain. Um, we've seen that anecdotally and there are studies as well to um, 
to to help support that. And we saw those we saw those those data show that with low dose and high dose cannabis, we still saw patients re getting relief. So it sort of bodes into that whole, if it's done properly with the right uh, products, you don't need to have a tremendously high dose to be able to still elicit a positive response in patients. Uh, cannabis and a HIV neuropathic pain, again, uh, regardless of the reason for the neuropathic pain, whether it was diabetes or HIV or another type of disease, uh, patients are still getting the benefits and we have now again data to help support that in the clinical studies.